Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Okamiden. In the last episode, we fought against the fearsome dragon Mizuchi. And we found Shiranui and Ishaku here in the past. Turns out, they were here fighting demons as well when they were frozen in a block of ice. And in this episode, we're going to be heading back to the moon cave. And of course, this merchant imp does nothing to let his fellow kind know that we have done so, hitching a ride. Now, what happened in the last episode, I've done a lot to defend some things that people have considered plot holes in Okamiden, but this is uh, this is one that I'm a bit wonder I'm, I wonder a bit about. That is that when you really think about it, we freed Shiranui from that block of ice so that he may step through the gate through the time gate to help Amaterasu save her life and then come back here to fight with Orochi. And the thing is, when you really think about that, he saved Amaterasu's life so that she may give birth to Chibi, who in turn went back in time and saved him so that he could do that in the first place. Creates a bit of a time paradox. However, what I can kind of think of as an explanation is maybe something else would have come along and freed Shiranui from that block of ice even if we weren't there. That's the only thing I can think of at all. So, it's possible that it's not a time paradox, but at the same time, I could see why people would think that it is. Alright, and I'm back. Uh, sorry if I sound a little bit different. I'm actually recording this, believe it or not, over a week later than I recorded the first part of this video. Now, we're actually not going to head into the moon cave quite yet. Remember how I've been using this third tier reflector for a little while? Well, I actually want to go back to the nearest ultimate mirror so that I can travel back in time, or travel forward in time, not back in time, there. Because I actually want to go and get the other third tier divine instruments before we move on, because I want everything to get its own screen time. So I'm gonna go over to Yakushi Village and I will show you what decision I make. And actually, no, I would like to um, talk for a little bit here. Um, first of all, our adventure is definitely coming to a close here. We've come quite a long way. We've traveled, heck, across time and space. Doesn't get much more far from home than that. I mean, heck, we can always return back, though, but... I really hope you've been enjoying this adventure. I sure as hell have. This really is one of my favorite ones of all time. And I always like sometimes getting to share a bit of a story with you that maybe you haven't heard before that I personally really like. And, you know, it's fun to see people enjoying stuff that I personally enjoy that they might not have heard of otherwise. But um, all that aside, we're going to go over and see Blacksmith the Blacksmith right beside Shaman the Shaman, and let's see what Blacksmith the Blacksmith has for us. Now, while we're in the present time as well, there's been a few things that people have been requesting of me. And Are you freaking serious? I'm one liver short of getting the Feather Sword. Okay, so what I guess I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the Mystic Beads for now. Now, really quick, if I interrupt myself, I'm pretty sure you're going to be okay with it, but I'm not sure if myself a few days ago was okay with it. He is a bit of a tightwad. But I just wanted to make a quick note here, and that is that I will not be getting the Feather Sword. Now, keep in mind, I still highly recommend you pick it up. It is the best divine instrument you can have during the main story. My reason for this is that... I want to use my reflector for the final area, because as an Okami fan, that is the only weapon class to use for the final area. And we have a single digit number of battles between now and the final area, and just because of that, I've only used the rosary for a few videos in the series, and I pretty much complained about it the whole time. That, and I used a glaive for over half the series, and I just kind of think that I've used the glaive enough, and it's time to give the rosary a bit more screen time. And spending 20 demon livers on something that would probably get used in one battle, if even that, that's why I'm not going to be picking it up. 
Like I said, I still highly recommend you pick up the Feather Sword, and I will be showing what it does in a bonus video, because we're going to have a bonus episode. But yeah, that is my explanation for this. I'm kind of sorry if any of you were looking for the Feather Sword, but that's kind of my reasoning for it, is that I just think that it's time for the Rosary to get a bit of screen time that is not complaining. Anyway, though, on with the video. So we're going to get that. As you see, it resembles a yin and yang, which is really cool. And I'm going to go ahead and equip that. And we're going to see what this looks like. Whoa! It's got little yin and yangs all over it. That's actually kind of cool. I've had a lot of people tell me, no, it's not yang, it's yang. No, A's in Japanese or, or just Asian languages in general are always pronounced ah, so it's actually yang. Your American tendencies have been fooling you all this time. No, I'm not really in a talking, but... I'm just saying that is how it is actually pronounced, and that's where the origin of the word is, so I'm just kind of pronouncing it to be respectful because this game does take place in Japan. Normally I'm not so anal about it, but there's a few people that people have been asking me to talk to now that we have Monpuku with us, because thing is, he is from the past. He is Kokari's ancestor, and people have been wondering what happens if I talk to some people in the present time with him. So, without further ado, there are three choice people that I have been asked by you in the comments to go check out. So, let's go see. I forgot I no longer have the Thunder Drum! People asked me to talk to this woman with Monpuku. My, my. Aren't you a tasty morsel? Wanna play with little old me? Haha! -ha. Um, I think I'm too young for whatever you wanna do. Uh, and there's a... Never mind. So that one was pretty funny, but one that a lot of people have been asking is what happens if I go back to Gen's Tower and talk to everyone here with Monpuku since he's from the past. I can't wait to finish my next invention. I love it when I start working on a new machine. Ooh, I can't wait to see what it is. That was disappointing. Monpuku didn't even have any idea who Gen is or what this is or anything like that. Uh, you actually can't go back through this again. Wait, examine? What the heck? Oh, Kuro's okay. Okay, you look worried. I'm sure if you eat something, you'll feel better. Wow, way to joke about her not eating. That's kind of a sensitive subject, Monpuku. Oh, God. <laughs> the last one people really want me to go talk to is they're curious what happens if I was to have Monpuku meet possibly his son and grandson? Okay, let's have Monpuku meet Kokari. And I'm amazed the game just didn't crash right there and everything didn't just explode. Hey, little pup. Where, where's Cooney? Cooney, what's that? Is it something to eat? Of course, Monpuku would turn a faithful encounter with his future grandson into something about food. Now, how about Karude? One can assume that Karude is possibly his son, right? There used to be so many animals around here until this demon started moving in and pushing them out. That's so sad. Poor animals. You guys picked some really disappointing blocks of text for me to go check out. I mean, God. These were not as entertaining as I thought they would be. It's just like, oh, yeah, I'm meeting my future grandson. Oh, well. I mean, I know that he doesn't know that, but I thought for sure there'd be some kind of irony in whatever he was to say, but... Oh, well. So, I'm gonna go ahead and load up my quick slots, because two of the slots are actually empty from our fight with Mizuchi. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you guys back at the Moon Cave 100 years in the past. Alright, we're back here at the Moon Cave, you know? As we're heading in there, I really gotta reflect on a lot of things, not just moments in the story and getting to see people's reactions to them. You know, whenever I do a story-driven game, there's always these people that just can't wait for the next episode and they're just telling me about it. it. It always makes me feel really good when people leave comments like that, but... God, Let's Playing this has been so much of a challenge as well. Getting DS recording working, granted, um, I know that some of you guys, like, probably think that I bought, like, a DS capture card from, like, that guy that was selling them a while back. Not like that at all. I actually worked on my own method of recording DS games, um, before that guy was even selling them. I just didn't get my first DSLP out until then, so this has been something I've been working on for a really long time. And it was no easy task getting this working, but I did it just because I like this game just that much, and I wanted to just share it with you guys. But, yeah, it took a long time just to get here, but now we got a way to break that magic seal. Time to use that amber! So we use the odd amber, and we get an aerodactyl out of it, which we now must defeat and capture. Okay, no, not really. As much as I would like to see, like, uh... Well, actually, Okami was originally going to have dinosaurs in it, but anyway. 
Time to go and save my Puku's mom. If we go this way, we might not be able to come back. Won't be able to warp either. You bet I want to go in. All right, now. This is the Moon Cave 100 years in the past. We are now entering another missable collectible zone. So there's a few things in here, not much, that you can actually miss. So... Here we go. We're gonna climb up this really cool looking stairway. God, still, I can't praise the graphics enough. They did an amazing job recreating this of it. Here we go. Ugh. I, I'm too weak. Puku needs food. I feel so dizzy. I can't go on. Forget about me. I'm done. Sorry, Mom. I guess we'll just carry him like we always do. No difference here. Just that he's face down. Honestly, I think that'd be more comfortable with Chibi. Maru. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Maru. I ate so much. I couldn't afford to keep you. I'll... Better that than eating the dog, I guess. That would have been horrible. I guess at least he's got some morals to him, but with that, we fall through the floor. Apparently, Monpuku weighed a little bit too much. No, okay, no, not really. Well, well, now I have a portly child and pup on the menu. I can get a fiendishly good soup stock out of this. It'll turn this simple fish soup into a most devilish broth. Now, I'll just heat up the soup till the meat melts off their bones. The soup! Yup. You thought I was happy because my puka was going to get cooked. Nope. <laughs> Burp. <laughs> wow, that hit the spot. You drank! You drank all of my soup! You have to give me the recipe for this soup. You know there's a possibility that a human's in it? Ugh. It was divine, thanks for the soup. You idiot! You know what happens now? I'll chop you up and make a new soup! So we have to fight some clay soldiers because he could summon some out of his whatever that thing was. Paddle, flipper, I don't know. I know that you like flip dough with it or something like that. I don't know. But um, while we're fighting here, I did ask you guys in the comments a few videos back to tell me if you like Von Puku, why do you feel that way? Because I was legitimately curious. And a lot of you guys got back to me with some interesting responses. And I do have to say, I see where you're coming from now. Because uh, I know Monpuku had fans, I just didn't know the particular reason. Now, before I say anything else, I am not going to ever say Monpuku is my favorite party member. That belongs to either Kagu or Kuro. Both of them, I think, just trump him in terms of just character development and all that other and everything else. Monpuku, I will say, I like how you guys pointed out to me that he probably has the greatest character flaws of any character, but he's funny, and he's not as serious as some of the other partners are, and it's good to have a balance of serious and comedic. So we'll destroy that thing so no one else gets hurt. We do that. I don't keep anyone from getting caught in this trap again. Some modder when I was passed out. It's my fault we had to give him away as a distant relative. I don't want to dwell on that. All I know is I'm never leaving your side, pork chop. And that's another thing you guys pointed out, is that he has very, very solid moral values that you can get behind. And that not all the party members are like that right away. A lot of them have to develop into their moral values. I mean, Kuro doesn't really know what to think right off the bat when you first meet him. Kuni is not very mature, and he's oftentimes afraid of doing things. Whereas Mampuku, he's willing to go into the face of danger to save his mom, and that is an admirable thing to do. And even though he, as you saw there, always wants food all the time... That's kind of his character flaw, but he's working to overcome it, and he's willing to do so. 
But I still do stand by the fact that he didn't have much of a reason to be in the game and that he was totally thrown into the last minute. But I get why people would like him now. I'll say that. I do like him a bit more that's been put into that perspective, but I would never say he's quite my favorite party member. But let's see, you two ain't too bad for a non-demon sword, I mean, happy to help. So we get some useless praise out of an imp. We keep getting praise out of imps, which is really weird, but anyway. Gonna go and unfreeze that chest over there. And I believe that this is gonna contain our first missable collectible. I don't know if it does or not. I'm guessing it does. Let's see if I'm right. Come on, go cross the spikes. Indeed it is. Um, that is a history scroll, which is the first and only one we're gonna be finding in this area. And this is a history scroll I personally really like. The torch is passed. I can't believe I was standing before two armies. That was pretty awesome seeing your former self, huh? But we still got lots of work to do here. Lucky for us that Oki showed up, was able to show up when he did. Woohoo! We were we were fortunate his sword started to glow when it did. So that tells the story of Oki uh, as well as Shiranui when we met him in our first adventure. So it's kind of interesting seeing that again. Um, I really like that particular scroll as well as the art on it. Right here we have a rooster fig. No reason you shouldn't have that by this point, but should you have not collected it, you do get another chance right there if you want to vine your way over there instead of just guiding Monfuga back over to you. That's a collectible I don't often see noted in any walkthrough that I read back when this game was new and I was trying to get 100%, so I just thought that I'd point it out because I knew that it was there and I don't see it often noted. So we'll grit that. And now that we have that history scroll, how about... We head into the heart of the Moon Cave, a hundred years in the past, an area that we never got to explore in Okami. How many times do I have to tell you, freaks? It's Charity, Monfuku's mother. I'm not cooking anything for Oroshi, do you hear me? A stubborn human. If you won't cook, then we'll just cook you instead. What are we gonna do? We have to help her. Stupid bars. Uh. 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 I got pains running through my stomach. I think it was that demon soup I ate. I remember when I first played this game, I was thinking how horrible it would be if that soup actually contained his mother like he was too late to save her and without even realizing it, he just drank his mom. But in all seriousness, this is actually really, this is really serious what's going on here, so I'm not going to make jokes. It is admirable that he does want to save his mother despite his character fly, and on top of that, he accepts that what's going on right here is entirely his fault, and that if he wasn't such a pig, that none of this would have happened. I like that he accepts that about himself. He knows it's his flaw, and he is accepting responsibility for it. Not all the characters do that right away. It's something that oftentimes they have to develop into. And it's just, I i will say that I do like that about Monpukuno. He is still not my favorite character by any means, like I said, but hey. I just kind of wanted to give Monpuku a little bit of time in the sun now that this area is primarily about his battle. Can't go in there quite yet, so how about we... No, nothing there. I guess we're just heading all the way to the end of this hall. And here we go.
Now that we have rescued Charity, what do you say? We take out this Clay Soldier and Clay Samurai that are standing between us and rescuing her for Monpuku. Go ahead and take them out. Draw Cherry Bomb. Get our Floral Finisher from this guy. Get ourselves a Demon Skin. I could really go for a Demon Liver right about now. I sound like I'm gonna eat it. Then again, Monpuku probably would. Let's go ahead and bring you down. And I gotta say, this third tier Rosary ain't half bad. It's not missing nearly as much as the other ones. I don't know if it's just longer, so it's not missing as much, but this one is not too bad. I guess maybe the third tier, I don't know if it's just got more homing on it or what, but I don't know, it could just be my imagination, but I just didn't really think it was nearly as bad as the other Rosaries that I've used. I mean, heck, you just flail right past them half the time, but there we go, we took care of that.